Every second, every minute, every hour, every day, everything, everyone, every place, every way, how you walk, how you stand, how you love, how you pray. Your life is holy ground. Every he, every she, every what, every who. It's in her, it's in them, it's in me and it's in you. In the bitter, in the sweet, in the calm and in the storm. Our lives are holy ground. So walk as if it's holy ground. Breathe as if it's all around. Why don't we talk and make a holy sound? Take your shoes off, you're on holy ground. We are one people sharing one story one tapestry we weave we are many people sharing many stories but only one legacy we leave every second every minute every hour every day Everything and everyone, every place, every way. How we walk, how we stand, how we love, how we pray. Our lives are holy ground. Can you feel the holy ground? Take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. Welcome. Happy Passover, Easter, Chag Sameach. Whether you are celebrating Passover, Easter, No Ruse, whatever you are celebrating, we're so excited that you are joining us for this hour. We may be separate. We may be in different parts of the world, but my hope is that for this time, we create holy ground, holy space together. If nothing else, the virus has taught me that as different as we are, different face, different races, different socioeconomic backgrounds, we really have so much more that we share. I am so grateful to the inspired artists who will be with us, the poets, the rabbis, the imams, and now I invite you to sit back, lean to the left if you choose, open your heart. We are stronger together. Now more than ever, let us share the love. Thank you. Here's the question I've been thinking about. What will all of this look like the morning after? The morning after we're again allowed out of our homes and back into school and work and restaurants, what will the world look like that we re-enter? And what together will we rebuild? Because our history tells us that after every catastrophe, there's a period of grieving and there's a period of rebuilding. And we're gonna have a lot to grieve, not only the loss of our loved ones, but the loss of opportunities, the loss of innocence, the loss of wages and security and donations and proms and b'nai mitzvah and graduation. But after all of that grieving and through all of that grieving will be not only an opportunity but an imperative to rebuild. And when we rebuild, what we create together, I pray will be rooted in all of the lessons learned over the course of this time of isolation and so much loss. I pray that we'll rebuild a society, a world that's rooted in justice, that's rooted in equity and equality and driven by compassion and by human dignity, and most of all, that's rooted in love, because that will be a world truly worth living in. Song these 
inside the seas and tides So still must be out on the water Still on the water She was there inside the tree of life So still must reside in the forest Still in the forest stronger together now more than ever let's share the love we love you hey this is pastor mark woodlock of reed temple ame church in glendale maryland you know, we have more in common than we've ever had before. I believe in the world. As we celebrate Passover and uh, Easter, we must be reminded that the one message for me is unity. It's about opening up the doors to serve the least, the left out, and the left behind. Uh, on yesterday, we fed over 500 families, which means about 2,000 people. And then next week, we're gonna do it again. We must open the door to our facilities, to our hearts, to our religion, to our beliefs, and serve everybody. We come together with about 2.2 million people today. Let's do that, let's unify. Let's come out of ourselves to the greatest self of God. Let's open up the door. Greetings and Chag Sameach, happy Passover. And may this plague, the coronavirus, be behind us and let us resume our lives very soon. In the meantime, here's a song from the Seder, from the Passover Seder. Thank you. 
peace, salam, shalom. My name is Omar Fendum, Syria and American rapper, poet based in Los Angeles, California. And here is the question I've been thinking about. Is it a clock or is it a bomb? Is it a poem or is it a song? I've been making music for over a decade and yet they keep asking me if it's haram, brother, go ask your mom or an imam. I'd rather the former, but that's just my preference. Or here's a suggestion, pick up a Quran. It's for those who think, ulil albab, reflecting upon the heavenly reference we ponder and question as many a blessings from husbands and wives to nations and tribes, striving to know one another's the lesson as tolerance beckons at every petty divide. Tis better to settle with egos aside for what hangs in the balance is more than our pride. It is lions and rhinos and tigers and eagles too feeble to hide when solar flares can choke the air and roll the hairs of polar bears who've grown so rare are floating over there it's hopeless no one cares but don't despair the coast is clear for those who know how to cope and share with open hearts not evil eyes for mother earth she will survive we live in love with hope and pride that mother earth she will survive we push and shove we poke and pride but mother earth she still survives and even if mankind should die our mother earth she will survive oblivious to all the borders men of ignorance create fumbling over nation states that crumble when tectonic plates rumble warning signs to keep us humble as we boldly procreate segregate then subjugate her from the deserts to the jungles while presidents and kings keep building statues of the arrogance and religious zealots argue over arbitrary narratives reducing God to a facade to make you think that the imperative is how you dress or where you pray or maybe what names you've inherited look such games are embarrassing, trivial to truth seekers who've been living their lives convivial, searching deep within for proof. Our teachers keep us in the loop, a generational gravitational orbit towards our precious youth, forever true. Prophetic reapers of the seeds we've sown, our health is our wealth. Poetic martyrs preach to each his own as life's longing for itself is in the eyes of sons and daughters, grand and great. The hand of fate is not a palm read by a psychic or a psalm read by a saint. It is the labor and the action and the work of decent men. It is the seconds and the minutes and the hours people spend preparing for our next of kin for mothers it's the second nature it's the brothers who lose sight and start these wars that complicate her boy we push and shove we poke and pride but mother earth she still survives we live in love with hope and pride that mother earth she will survive and even if mankind should die this mother earth she will survive our mother earth she will survive our mother earth she will survive inshallah we are stronger together now more than ever My ancestors faced adversity. My ancestors knew starvation and disease, pogrom and discrimination, and yet they found hope, especially at this time of year. 
They celebrated Passover, and at the end of the Passover, they proclaimed next year in Jerusalem. Not a physical Jerusalem, but a spiritual Jerusalem, a redeemed world, a world of new possibilities, a world of new strength. Where do we find hope? I find hope in the angels that surround me. I find hope in the doctors and nurses who put themselves on the line between death and life, between illness and healing. I find hope in teachers who have extended themselves beyond the classroom into the lives of children stuck at home. I find hope in moms and dads who have embraced their kids and spent time like they've never spent time before. I find hope at the supermarket workers who make sure that there's plenty to eat. I find hope in everyone who has opened their hands and opened their hearts. Where do we find hope? We find hope in the angels that we can now see all around us. So this holiday season, be an angel. Be an angel to someone who needs a hand, to someone who needs a word, to someone who needs the strength. Be an angel. And if you're an angel, and I'm an angel, the world will be healed. The angel passed over me It says in these ancient texts And each year I'm reminded To remind myself I'm still feeling the effects The wit doesn't make any rational sense there's no admissible evidence I'm sticking by my story The angel passed over me The angel passed over me night while I was asleep And I woke with a start And a pounding heart From a dream so vivid and deep And nothing had changed in the room at all There were clouds across the face of the moon, that's all And though I didn't actually see the angel passed over me The angel passed over me And I'm grateful I truly am To be given the chance To continue the dance for as long as I have For as long as I can For every birth There must be a death For every first There's a last breath And I don't know When that's going to be Or why the angel Passed over me the angel passed over me Ooh. We are stronger together Now more than ever Let's share the love As below, so above Let the angel pass over you let the angel pass over me Is matzah gluten-free? Why on this night are there hungry people anywhere? Why does anyone even notice the color of someone else's skin? 
acquire their guns. Since we're doing it by video this year, can we shorten the Seder so we don't use all our data? Why can't everyone do their own thing without feeling threatened by someone else's thing? Are we still wandering in the desert? Wouldn't it be nice if we could all go outside and enjoy the desert? Why are the words desert and dessert so deliciously similar? If you saw a burning bush, would you put it out? Would you yell at rocks if you knew they would spout water? Or would you just talk to them kindly? Why is some matzah not kosher for Passover? Who in their right mind wants to eat matzah when it's not Passover? Have you ever talked to a bush, a rock, the sky, your God, our God, my God? Are you sure we haven't reached the promised land and it's just closed temporarily for cleaning? Are you going to finally get to the second part of the Seder this year? Or are you going to call it quits when the meal comes? If Elijah really showed up when you opened the door, would you let him in? Even if he wasn't wearing an N95 mask? Who really drinks from Elijah's cup? It's you, isn't it? Are you free? Have you ever been free? Shouldn't everyone be free? When the future لا تنس قوت الحمام وأنت تخوض حروبك فكر بغيرك من يطلبون السلام وأنت تسدد فاتورة الماء فكر بغيرك من يرضعون الغمام وأنت تعود إلى بغيرك لا تنسى شعب الخيام وأنت تنام وتحصل كواكبا فكر بغيرك من لم يجد حيزا للمنام وأنت تحرر نفسك بالاستعارات فكر بغيرك من فقدوا حقهم في الكلام وأنت تفكر بالآخرين البعيدين فكر بنفسك قل ليتني شمعت في الظلام ليتني شمعت في الظلام As you prepare your evening meal Think of how the others feel Don't forget to feed the hungry as you wage your wars with guns Think of all the other ones Those who still believe in peace and love As you pay for running water Think of someone's son or daughter Nursed by clouds beneath a starry dome As you return from work tonight Think of others and their plight those who live in camps and dream of home As you lay your head to rest dreaming deep Remember those who have no place to sleep As you let your words run free and rhyme or tongue in cheek Remember those who've lost their very right to speak you think of others far away, think of yourself and say, if only I could be a candle in the dark, I wish I were a candle in the dark. Light 
ليتني 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 شمعة في الظلام لو هيتي لو هيتي لو هيتي نبقى في اللام If only I could be If only I could be A candle in the dark Like all of you, I've been washing my hands a lot lately. And like all of you, I've been taking more care in washing. I was reminded of a great study that Adam Grant, the professor from University of Pennsylvania did about how to get people who work in hospitals to wash their hands more. They did an experiment. They put one sign over the washing station, wash, otherwise you may get sick. Over another washing station, they said, wash, you may get others more ill. Which do you think got more people to wash more often? It was the second. It was caring about the other that brought people to do the right thing. The great Jewish philosopher, Emmanuel Levinas taught that we come into the world obligated by the mere gaze of another person. And that gaze demands a response. I saw the graffiti artist in, in Munich did a wall. It said the coronavirus is a wake up call. It gives us a chance to create a new and more loving society. I know we can build that more loving society. I know you do too, because friends, we are stronger together. Kommt der Tag schon, 
Seid gesund und stark. It is a time of celebration, even as we uh, face a very solemn moment in our nation's history and the, the pandemic around the world has us on our heels. Our faiths teach us to be steadfast, to be optimistic and even hopeful. Many have just celebrated the Persian New Year, uh, which is a time uh, to look forward, to be optimistic and to aspire to what is possible. Our faiths do the same thing, whether it's the renewal of Easter or the time of Passover in which there was a great saving of the Jewish people from oppression. The time of Ramadan for Muslims is the pinnacle of the, of the calendar. It's a time in which we restrain ourselves from food and drink during the daylight hours so we can feel more empathetic to those in need. And this time, Ramadan will be different because we're in isolation. Usually it's a time of great uh, socialization with one another, in person, breaking bread, celebrating accomplishments. This year will be different, but it is, a t it is an opportunity that we can come together across America, across the world, and celebrate faith through service to one another. And Ramadan this year will be about charity. Thank you. Eri, Eri, Shalom, With this coronavirus thing, every time in the news they say don't touch your face, it makes you want to touch your face. Like every time they say that, I feel like I get an itch right there. And then, and then I go wash my hands, and then I lotion my hands, and then I touch my face, and then I touch something else, my hands get dirty, and then I wash my hands, and then I lotion my hands, and I touch my face, and my hands get dirty. And it just keeps going over and over and over again. I'm losing my mind. I just touched my face. See? My head, my face, it's all the same when you're bald. Listen. Just want to wish you all happy Easter, happy Passover, happy no ruse. Wash your hands. Don't shake hands. That's another thing. Don't shake hands, okay? You got to go namaste. Anyone wants to shake your hands? You just say namaste. And, and you don't say, oh, no, I'm not shaking hands. You say, you say namaste because when you say, I'm not shaking hands, they think it's rude. But when you say namaste, they think you do yoga. There you go. Happy Easter, happy Passover, happy no ruse, happy whatever. At the end of the Seder, we say next year in Jerusalem. If you're in Jerusalem, you don't say next year here. You say next year in a rebuilt Jerusalem. Because during the Seder, we feel that things aren't as they should be 
could be that we open the door, but Elijah doesn't walk in, that the matzah is broken, that Jerusalem and the world are not rebuilt. And this year we feel it more than ever. But even as we feel that, the Seder encourages us to believe that one day we will open the door and redemption will be there, that we will find the Afikomen, that we will rebuild Jerusalem and the world. So this year, even as we feel the brokenness, believe in the wholeness, because just like the pain, the promise is real. Are we truly free today? Avadim Hayinu, we were slaves. But are we not still slaves today to some degree? Are we truly free in our spirituality, in our intellectual deliberations, in our moral choices? Maimonides, the greatest Jewish philosopher in history, argued that the entire goal of the Jewish tradition is the perfection of our inner world and the perfection of our outer world. There are moments when we can work on the freedom of the outer world, and then there are these rare, odd, troubling moments like now when we don't have the freedom to address that world. But we can go inward. We can go inward to move the unconscious and the subconscious more into the conscious realm. So we can own our choices. We can determine our destinies with more control. And in these moments, we can become more free in our inner world in order that we can create a more just and free world in the outer world. May we use these rare opportunities now to enhance freedom for ourselves and for those we love.
Most every item on our Seder table symbolizes some remembrance of who we once were, who we are, and who we truly ought to be. So one particularly symbolic tradition is leaning to the left as we drink. And many think that has to do with celebrating freedom, uh, emulating wealth and affluence, royalty, each of us acting as if we were kings or queens. But perhaps Leaning to the left is also an invitation to lean closer to one another, to the presence of God, to embrace the earthly, to embrace the feminine, to embrace creativity and all the things associated with right hand, left brain thinking. Even today, this day, as we observe the loss of some of our most basic freedoms, isn't it our duty to act as if, ki ilu, as if we were free to touch one another, to share, to connect. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to the artists and the poets and the, and the faith leaders for sharing their stories and songs with us. And an extra special thank you to my son Noah for putting this all together. I leave you with these thoughts. Be kind. Let's all try to do better, be a tad more compassionate, and love our neighbors as we all wish to be loved. And may tonight be a reminder that light cannot be hoarded, it must be shared. Light cannot be taken, it's only given. And light cannot be for some and not for others. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Health and goodness for all of us. Alberto, why don't you end the program? Take it away, Alberto Mizrahi. <laughs> Maybe 
you shouldn't try this at home. Oh! Hard, God, your heart, God. 